Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I am filming a video about series and this was inspired by uh, Katie from Life Between Words. Um, she did a video um, about series that she needs to finish and I really enjoyed watching and I thought yeah I need to do that video because I think I'm in the middle of like three or four series or four or five series and then <laughs> yesterday I went and counted <clears throat> how many series I'm in the middle of and the answer like <laughs> I was not expecting I am in the middle of 30 series and I have no idea um so some of them are not I mean when I say series I class like duologies plus as um as a series for purposes of this video um some of them I own and haven't started the first one yet which is probably why I didn't realize there were so many some of them I just was like, oh yeah, I think that is a series and I hadn't really realised and they're not on my series shelf, so now, yeah, what do I do about that? Anyhow, so I'm just going to start and I'm going to do a real quick whip through because obviously I don't want like, to discuss each series for more than 30 seconds to a minute because otherwise this will be way too long. So, the first one I have <clears throat> is I accidentally bought book two not knowing that this was a series. Um, this is... Um, the Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood. This is part of the Mad Adam trilogy, but this is book, I believe, book number two. Um, so I need to actually get book number one so that I can read this. Um, the Mad Adam trilogy is like a, um, I believe, a sci-fi um, trilogy, um, which I don't really know too much about. I just remember like 10 years ago, maybe, uh, that everyone was going on about it. So I got this not realizing this was the second one <clears throat> next i have um a series by one well by one of my favorite books of all time okay atkinson he wrote life after life which is one of my favorite books ever she has done a crime series um a jackson brody series and this is the first book called case histories um so jackson brody is a private investigator who used to be a police officer um, I don't know too much about it apart from that, but again, I know that this is supposed to be a good crime series. I think that she's finished writing the series, but I'm not 100%. But all of these are going to go in a bullet journal spread for me. Another idea that I got from Katie, um, so that I can like tick off each one as I read it and know how many there is in the series. So this is either a duology or a trilogy, I'm not sure, and um, this is YA. This is To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Um, I watched the film of this and absolutely loved the film. And I've seen the second film as well. This is a YA about Lara Jean who is um, living in the States with her dad and her two sisters. And she's written like love letters to all the boys that she ever loved through school. And her sister thinks it will be really funny if she um, sent them. Um, and so, um, yeah. So then this is like the consequences of what happens when um, the boys get the letters. And I, the film is just so gorgeous, like seriously recommend the film. Uh, the next one is um, Testament of Youth by Vera Britton, which I've talked about loads. It's a World War I diaries of Vera Britton, who was a, a nurse in, in the First World War. She's then written like Testament of Friendship and Testament of something else. So two more sort of follow it in, you know, in the memoir series of her life and I love this, this is one of my books of the year so this is definitely um, one to continue with but they are chunksters so yeah I don't know when it will be, I don't own the next one. So the next one is one that I would um, never normally have bought but I like trying new things and I saw it in a charity shop and I just thought you know what why not because trying new things is fun and this is Aragon by Christopher Paolini um, book one in the inheritance cycle so this is about um, a boy called Aragon who finds a blue stone in the forest and he doesn't realise that it's actually a dragon hatching um, so yeah and it's all about like it's a fantasy series um, about dragons and I just thought yeah this will be really cool to try because it's not normally something that I would <coughs> that I would try. 
So the next one I've read book one and this is book two which I believe is the only other book um, and this is Oggy and Me by RJ Palacio. So this is the sequel to Wonder which is amazing, it's a YA book about um, um, Oggy who has a uh, Treacher Collins syndrome which is a syndrome where <clears throat> he has um, a number of disfigurements um, because of the syndrome and it's about his uh, journey starting school, starting secondary school and how people um, respond to him and um, his friendships that he makes and this is um, three wonder stories so this is three people in his class who are telling their own version of events and I read Wonder like several years ago and I absolutely loved it, I loved the film um, so yeah this is another one that I'm really looking forward to <clears throat> Then uh, I've read book one of the next series, but there's quite a lot of other books. Um, and that is the Poldark series. So this is book two. I've read book one. This is Demelza book two. So this is um, a series which is also a TV adaptation. And it's um, in set in the when, 1700s, this one. Um, it's set in Cornwall in um, like mining times. And it's just about basically Paul Dark, who is the sort of owner of um, one of the tin mines in Cornwall, um, and his family. And I think it kind of sort of follows on from character to character each book. Yeah, each book is um, a different character, and there's a lot of them. But I really enjoyed the first one. I just, sorry, I don't know what's happening to my voice. It just keeps. <clears throat> it just keeps on disappearing. Right, next I have a series which I am nearly up to date with. Um, I am. I, ha I own all the books. Well, I say that I've read book one, but I got it from the library, so I don't own that one. I need to buy it. Um, I've owned book two and three, um, and that is Pages and Co. by Anna James. So this is the second one. So this is about Tilly, who is. Um, this is a middle grade series, I should say. Tilly is growing up in a bookshop owned by her grandparents, and they could do something called book wandering, where they can go into books and. Um, be part of the story but also characters can come out of books and interact with them and this is like a really cozy childhood adventure about books and people who love books and it's brilliant and then this next one is kind of like um funny um there's a lot of books and i've read like the first gosh i don't know like six maybe and um, this is a series it's a cozy crime series that i heard about from simon from savage reads when he had the readers podcast he used to talk about this quite a bit um, and it, how it was kind of like something he went back to um, for like if he needed some sort of cosy vibes um, and it's Agatha, the Agatha Raisin series so this is quite old the uh, TV adaptations um, came out um, a while ago so this one is the first one and it was written in 1992 um, so basically Agatha Raisin is like a PR guru who retires to the Cotswolds when she's quite young and um, lots of crimes go on in this little village and they're like crazy crimes she kind of gets involved in solving them so this is like Agatha Raisin and the quiche of death so they're quite sort of humorous crimes um, but you can whiz through them in like a day and they just are like if you need something really escapist and you don't have to employ too many brain cells to read it then they're, they're a good series so the next pile I have on my lap, um, we start with memoir, um, we start with the uh, Maya Angelou memoirs, so I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is number one. I've already listened to this on Audible but I want to, this copy is from the library and I want to reread it um, before I go on to the rest of the series so I'm not sure if it says how many there is, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight in the series of this and um, they're not big books so um, I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of those. Next is a duology which I really really want to read but I'm kind of scared because I love the first one so much and I've already mentioned the first one. Um, the Vasm's Life After Life, this is The God in Ruins. So Life After Life is about Ursula Todd who every time she dies she is born again back in the same life she starts at the beginning but she remembers some of the lessons from before um and it follows her life it's set in um world war ii and 
This is A God in Ruins is about her brother Teddy who is a much beloved character in Life After Life. I think you can read them as standalones. I think you can read them in either order but I want to read them in the order they're written and I've read Life After Life twice. That will not be the last time I read it because I just love it so much. Um, and yeah, this is about Teddy. Um, so I can't wait. But I'm kind of like whilst I can't wait I don't want it to be over so I haven't read it I've had it for ages and not read it uh the next one is um a trilogy and this is uh Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan the main thing picking me off this is like the writing is absolutely tiny I love the cover though <laughs> um so I know this is also a film um so it's about a woman Rachel who um, goes to Singapore with her boyfriend for the summer and doesn't realise that he's absolutely super rich because he's never told her. Um, and it's, yeah, it's kind of how her life changes once she goes to Singapore and finds that out. And um, there's two more after this one. Next, we have a book that I read last year, um, the Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is about a time travelling cafe where you can go back to a specific moment in time when you were in the cafe already and um, you have to go back, you have to sit in a certain seat in the cafe and you have to come back to the present before the coffee gets cold. Um, and this was really lovely, it's like I think it's four different stories of people who time travel back with different relationships for different reasons and there are two more or one definitely one more possibly two more in this series the next one is again like something that i wouldn't usually pick up um I'm, um so this is uh the magicians by lev grossman so this is uh about quentin coldwater whose life has changed forever by an a chance encounter when he turns up for his interview to princeton he finds his interviewer dead but a strange envelope bearing Quentin, Quentin's name leads him down a very different path to any he'd ever imagined, to a secret world. Um, so, yeah, it sounds a tiny bit like um, The Star of the Sea, just from reading the back. It sounds a little bit like The Night Circus, but we'll see. So I'm pretty sure this is a trilogy, um, and I know it got a lot of good press when it came out, so that's why I got that one. The next one is one of the oldest books I've got. It probably is the oldest book on my TBR and I have no idea why. I reckon I've had it for 20 years at least. And it's an author who I loved so much when I was growing up uh, with Catherine Kixon. So this is the Manon Trilogy. Um, this is all three novels that are in this book. There's the Manon Streak, the Manon Girl, the Manon Litter. So I know that I've read the first one at least twice and then neglected to go on to the second and third ones. Not because they weren't good, just because um, just because they didn't. I don't really know why. Um, so I really need to start again because I can't remember like 20 years ago what happened. I remember someone dies of TB. That's all I can really remember. Um, I don't know how I feel about the Catherine Kicks and Vicks now because when I was growing up, I absolutely loved them. Like me and my mum listened to every single audiobook of hers that we could get hold of and we loved them so much and I haven't read it for such a long time and I remember buying this I remember we got it in like um a bookshop in Dedham which is um where my mum's from and um yeah so that will be um kind of like a really nice nostalgic one so I then have one series that I've mentioned recently uh the after series by Anna Todd well, I've read book one and I can't wait to read the rest. Um, this is about Tessa and Hardin and their romance. It's a romance series, like probably new adult romance. Um, just trying to get it so it's not quite so shiny. There we go. So Tessa is like a good, studious girl and Hardin is like a bad, messed up boy and they like sparks fly and they have a, a romance which is like quite destructive and quite um, unhealthy. But it's like super addictive and it's super addictive to read as well. I loved the first book which I read um, just before Christmas and I cannot wait to crack on with the series. Like my best friend's just finished the series and um, she's desperate for me to read the series as well so that we can discuss 
Another one which has film adaptations to book one and book two so far, which is how I got into it in the first place. <clears throat> okay, so next we have Anne of Green Gables, which I do not need to discuss because um, I love book one. Everyone knows about Anne of Green Gables already, so I'm not going to say any more because time's cracking on. Um, I then have James Harriet, All Creatures Great and Small. So this is the memoirs of James Harriet. He was a Yorkshire, I believe Yorkshire vet from Glasgow, um, set in the 1930s. And I think there's five in this series, but I bought this in the beginning of the first lockdown because I wanted some cosy reading. And it's still on my shelf, but I'd love to read it. Next is another memoir series. So Stephen Fry's memoirs. Moab is my wash pot is this one. This is number one. I'm not sure how many there is. I think there might be three, but um, not exactly sure. So um, this is his memoirs. We all know who Stephen Fry is. Um, I remember enjoying this. I didn't like love it, but I remember enjoying it. But I read it ages ago, so... I might have to kind of read the end again to actually sort of remember what this covered. Our next is a super, super cute little um, duology. I I love these. So the first one is um, this one, Poor Tracks in the Moonlight. And then there's uh, Poor Tracks at Out to Owl Cottage. So they're, they're like true stories written by... Um, Dennis O'Connor and this is about like he finds a little cat called Toby that he calls Toby a little kitten in 1966 um, when he's a college lecturer um, and he finds this freezing little tiny kitten who has to try and nurse back to life um, and this is like his story with Toby the cat um, and then this one um, oh yeah so this is where they go back to the house where it all happened um, I find it all dilapidated. So actually, I really want to read this too, but I want to reread this one first because it's so, so sweet. I remember it made me like sob, but yeah, they're so lovely. Um, next is a series that I have nearly finished, but I want to start it again from the beginning because I always thought this was one of my favourite books of all time, but I started reading this series when I was 10 and um so that was a while ago and um i don't know if i was still for the same about it now but i really hope i would so this is the earth's children series and this is book one the clan of the cave bear by jean m owl i think there's about seven of these and they're all quite big chunky books and i've got three of them and i really want a matching set like really really but there we go um so this is set in prehistoric times, so I've never read anything like this before. It follows a girl called Ayla who um, gets separated from her family and her people um, by an earthquake and she gets um, taken in by the clan of the cave bear. Forgive me, but I can't remember what kind of age these people are from. So like, I think oh, Ayla's a Cro-Magnon, but... I can't remember what the clan are but what I'm worried about now is because this was written in the 80s I'm worried if this will be like if there'll be like um racism and stuff in here which I wouldn't have noticed when I was a kid um so yeah that's what I'm worried about but I really want to re reread the whole series again um then we have one everyone knows so I have to read the last one in the um, Northern Lights trilogy. So this is The Amber Spyglass um, by Philip Pullman. Um, so I've read The Subtle Knife and um, Northern Lights and I have this one still to go. And then I've got the first one of the um, Belle Sauvage um, trilogy, which is uh, prequels to The Northern Lights. So, um, yeah. So there's those. And then the last ones you'll be pleased to hear, are ones that I've either got on Kindle or Audible. So I've got the Cormoran Strike series, which is Robert Galbraith, um, private detective series where I've read only book one. I've got book two on Audible to listen to. Um, and I th I'm not sure how many there is. Um, I have one of my favourite books of the year from last year was The Nothing Girl. 
which was the book about Jenny who has a problem with um, stammer and anxiety and is trying to, her family are trying to um, keep her just living with them and not really doing anything with her life until she marries a guy called Russell and she has a golden talking horse who is her companion and it is an adult book, not a way. It's not a fantasy book, um, but it's got magical realism in it. Um, and then, so Nothing Girl, I think the next one's called Everything Girl. And um, I'm really looking forward to listening to that one on Audible. Uh, then we've got the Dash and Lily series, which was on made into a Netflix adaptation. And this is set around two teenagers who love sort of literature and books. And they, um, in the first one, they sort of leave notes book for each other in different locations around New York and they get to know each other through writing letters to each other. We have Olive Kittredge. Um, so I read book one and there's a sort of a spin-off book two called Still Olive. Um, this is also a series I think on Netflix which I haven't watched which would be really nice but Olive is like a formidable woman who um, it talks about sort of her difficult relationship she has with her husband and her son and the different members of their community and she's very like a real character and you get to like know her and um, like her even though she's a difficult person um, and then this is I think like I said Olive again is the next one we then have Bear Town which um, I haven't read yet um, but there is a second one in the series and this is I believe set in Sweden and a place where the forest is getting I can't remember if it's getting bigger or smaller year on year and a crime or an event happens which sort of basically um, divides the whole community into whether they should talk about it or not I think and there's now a second one of those out and then the last one is the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. So I've heard so many people talk about how much they love this. This is a fantasy book um, about the fifth season where I think happens every few years where natural disasters happen. Um, and I can't remember too much more about it than that, but I know it's very beloved on BookTube and I bought the first one in the series, but I haven't read the rest. So, whew. That was my massive list, which I cannot believe how big it is, of series that I need to finish. So, first of all, like, tell me if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were. But I need to somehow <laughs> make these fit into the prompts for, like, Pop Sugar and Reading Women so that I can read them this year. I feel like I've got so many projects that I'm really excited about this year, like Reading Women, like Pop Sugar... I'm currently making a spread in my billet journal of all of the um, Oprah Book Club choices, which is an idea I got from Karen Evans. And um, I'm not trying to read them all this year by any means because there's like 80 something. But I've read some of them already, but I just wanted to have like a spread of all of them. Um, and quite a few of them I've got on my TBR as well. And then there's my series. So I feel like I have tons of stuff that I'd love to do this year with reading, but I'm not going to do it in like a stressy way I'm just going to do it as fun like trying to see how many of these I can kind of fit in with um, prompts and stuff like that so that's my series list which I'm shocked by as you can imagine <laughs> um, so let me know is there any series that you would really that you really love or that you haven't finished yet or that you need to finish um, let me know um, it's always lovely to get comments from people um, and I will speak to you soon bye